number 19, Nut, uh, James B. Nutter and Co. versus County of Saratoga. Council? May I reserve two minutes for rebuttal? You may. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, Greg Blaze for the appellant, JBNC. Your Honors, when read correctly, Article 11 of the RPTL gives an aggrieved party a basis to contest the validity of a tax sale based on the lack of notice with competent evidence. The legislature's 2006 amendment to Section 1125 did not dispose of that right. But what, what exactly, counsel, is your argument to us here? Why should you be allowed to do that in this case? Because we are the, the rare party, Your Honor, that brought to the court evidence of lack of notice. And the specific argument you made about that evidence in the trial court was what? That the evidence is sufficient to rebut the presumption of validity of the notice. And it was supported by more than just JBNC's denial. It consisted of the evidence regarded, regarding the certified mailing and the fact that the town had not notified us of the county liens, the willingness by JBNC and to pay the Does lien. that show that they didn't follow the proper procedure, or does that go to show that you didn't get notice? It, it shows lack of notice, Your Honor, and that's an important point because... But what if, let's say that's true, but, and they followed the entire procedure, isn't the obligation on the town to do everything reasonable to get you notice? The, the town made the mistake, and there was a mistake of notice. So I can deal with the town's mistake first, but Your Honor. even assuming it didn't get to you, they had an address that you provided. They used that address, and you're saying at least one of those mailings may not have gotten to you. Even if there's a presumption, how does that rebut it? I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. Well, but the, here's the thing, Your Honor. Both notices failed. But the, the question is, and the point is, that the county can do everything right, uh, and if the notices don't come back, they're entitled to take that first step and obtain a presumptively valid tax deed. So just, just to get perfect clarity on this, are you saying the county did everything right in the sense that they complied with the statutory requirements? I, I'm not conceding that the notice was uh, sent correctly. What I'm saying is that the county... Did you brief that? We, we did, Your Honor. The county prepared an affidavit. They attached copies of documents. And under 1125, that was the step that the county needed to take to obtain a presumptively valid tax deed. The was statute, there anything that you allege, or because I didn't see the argument, that that was defective in the affidavit? Well, the notice ultimately was defective because it wasn't delivered. And I, I would draw a comparison. I would draw a comparison, Judge, to the Jones case, because in the Jones case, what you see there is that the county did nothing wrong. The notices were correctly addressed. They had yeah, noticed that it, was, it didn't get delivered, which you haven't shown in this case. That's the difference between, but you have to look at the next step, Your Honor, because in New York, it's a two-part process. The county sends the notice, and if the notice doesn't come back, they are permitted for due process purposes and under the statute to take the presumptively valid deed. But then 1134 and 1137 come into play. And what the legislature was saying is, we're going to deal with that rare case, like this one, where there's no notice, in the 1137 proceeding after the fact. So the you're arguing both not compliance with the statute and the failure to receive actual notice? The non-compliance with the statute is when the court refused to review JBNC's evidence. There was an additional- That is what you're arguing here. That's correct, Your Honor. There was an additional obligation by the court to hear the evidence. That's both under 1137. So, so, so is your point that once they moved and put in this evidence, which is not where you started. You started, I think, as Judge Garcia was pointing out, arguing we didn't get notice. We, had, we didn't get actual notice, which under the law, you need not get actual notice. That's not required. But in any event, once they then moved and you objected and challenged through the UPS tracking, USPS, excuse me, tracking and also your respective affidavit saying, on our records we didn't receive anything. And you're saying at that point, motion should not have been granted to them because you've raised a tribal issue. Is that where you say these arguments are raised? Yes, Your Honor. And the, the, um, the general rule, you're correct, Your Honor, the general rule is that 
proof of notice is not required for due process. That's the, that's the presumption that the statute uh, Im implies. So the statute is tracking the due process obligations. The point here is that notice is not irrelevant in all cases. It's your, it is not necessarily something that the county has to prove. It's not necessarily something that the county has to prove. If someone comes to court with just no, their mere denial. But I understand your argument to be that you put in question whether or not they actually were in compliance with the statute. I thought that's what you were putting in question. What we put in question was the lack of notice, Your Honor. And again, I look to the Jones case. The county can take all of the correct steps, but if the notice is not received and the party doesn't have an opportunity to defend themselves, but that the notice is can be received for a lot of different reasons not received. I mean, you could have moved, you could have done anything. That's not a due process violation that you didn't get and didn't leave a forwarding address, right? Not this case, but let's say that's a case. That's not a due process. Those violation. are harder cases, Judge, and that's because- That case that, would be a due process violation? Well, I'm not sure that it would be at that point, Judge, because, and there are cases that are out there that say when the interested party does something to stymie the notice, like they move, they change their name, something like that, then the court can look at that issue. Our, our issue here is that we had but, a- But that's not the line that the legislature seems to have drawn here. They, because in 1125, <clears throat> they include the deemed received uh, language in, uh, what is it, section 1B. And then they have their section 3B language, which says the failure to actually receive notice is not a fatal defect. But, but in 1137, you can bring a challenge within two years. Who could bring that challenge? Someone who didn't have notice. And of course, the words shall be deemed, Your Honor, have been construed by courts Well, you the also could have brought meaning. under 1134, correct? Uh, trial counsel was being complete, Your Honor, but it was an action under 1134 and 1137. I think what 11. Just as a follow-up, though, what evidence do you have that the first-class mail was improper. The, the failure of the certified piece is probative as to the first class piece. How? It is because they were sent by the same person at the same time, handed to the USPS. And I think what the legislature did when they amended 1125 to require certified is to give respondents like JBNC the ability to bring this evidence to court. They also, not for nothing, gave the ability of the county to dispose of one of these cases. If someone comes and says, I didn't get notice, and the county has a tracking receipt that says they did, that would be the end of that suit. Thank you. Counsel, can the failure to receive notice by the defendant be evidence of lack of compliance with the statute? In a general sense, can a failure to receive notice it could be because they might not have received it because the county didn't send it, but that's not the case today. Um, as uh, your honors have indicated, uh, there is no proof that they didn't get notice except the self-serving affidavits. Um, is, can you sure. start, if you would, with the question, is this the same argument that was made in the trial court that we're hearing in this court? Uh, in general, yes, Your Honor. We weren't counsel in the trial court, um, but yes, this is the same argument, except um, we are here to argue that the statute, as is written, um, shall be deemed received. Um, actually, the appellate division does say it is not an irrebuttable presumption. Contrary to what um, appellant has indicated, there's nowhere in the appellate division's decision where it says, this is an irrebuttable presumption. What it says is, we looked at the, the information. It says that the Supreme Court, Judge Crowell looked at the information, looked at the affidavits, and still found that that was not sufficient to rebut the presumption. So the certified questions to this court specifically indicate. So what would be sufficient? I mean, if, they, if they, what would be sufficient? They have, they, you also, you cross moved, as I recall, for summary judgment. Correct. They oppose, and you've got on your motion, cross motion for summary judgment, evidence that you followed, right? You submitted evidence that you felt established, you followed all the procedures, and you made other arguments. And then they object, and they come up with the USPS tracking information that shows that it was the certified mail was delivered to a P.O. box, not the address on that certified uh, receipt. What, what more would they have need? And then they've also argued that we didn't actually receive it, again, going to perhaps you didn't properly mail it. So what, what else would they have had to have shown? Let me put it that way. To have 
come up with a triable issue of fact. It's a very good on this question. On this question. On this question. Yes, Your yeah. Honor. Um, that's an unknown. Um, because that's not what was before the court. Perhaps um, they had someone say, we tracked the U.S. Post Office first class mail, um, I believe in either their reply affidavit or um, in their uh, initial um, papers, they stated, well, first class mailing can be tracked too. The county should have done that. Well, perhaps they could have presented that evidence too. Um, the, the point, Your Honor, however, is we don't know what gets to that level. Um, but in this case, but it why doesn't isn't, get there. Why isn't what they presented enough this, on a summary judgment motion? Sure. Why, why isn't that, uh, or excuse me, in opposition to your summary judgment motion, why isn't that enough? Sure. Um, in the, case, the Law versus Benedict case, which they state, uh, which they cite, um, it talks about how, um, you know, you really should have both, certified and the U.S. Um, in this case, neither came back. Mm -hmm. It was just after the fact mm -hmm. that we, the county was told, oh, by the way, certified never gave it through. Um, first class mailing never came back. And the statute specifically states um, the 45 days has to have both certified and U.S. mail come back. Um, the, the Jones case um, and a, the, the progeny from Jones, ju uh, ju uh, Senator Little's um, bill jacket, her memo, Everything really was for due process. Mm -hmm. And in this mm -hmm. case, um, we're hearing here today that perhaps the county didn't comply with due process. This was the first argument, and, and Justice, I believe you asked um, the question. Um, but I, I thought you, you, or maybe I misunderstood you. I thought sure. you agreed that they had put in question whether or not it was properly mailed in accordance with the statute. Uh, maybe I misunderstood you. you didn't. I didn't say that. Okay. No, Your Honor, and I apologize if that was on my behalf. Okay. There's no. Well, what's the question you think they put forward oh, with their they objection to the cross uh, motion for summary judgment? They claim yes. um, that because the certified mail came back, yes. that is sufficient to create a question of fact. Certified mail came back. Or, I'm sorry, the certified mail did not come back, but they prove that. Oh, look, we have something from the U.S. Post Office saying it was sent to a P.O. box. The and county and never knew an, that. there's an absence of a postmark also, right, on the certified mail receipt? There is. And that they're also asserting that as evidence that perhaps the mailing wasn't done properly. That the certified mailing wasn't done properly. There's yeah. no evidence that the... Well, that depends on, I mean, his argument is the evidence that the regular mailing was also, regular mail was not proper was it was deposited along with 600 plus other pieces of mail and the fact that the one that was certified that is supposed to be tracked and so on doesn't have a postmark and never came back is evidence that something was wrong with the other one too. Now, I don't know if I agree with that, but that's his argument. Yes, right. that is their argument. So and there's it, some evidence, it's just a question of what sure. weight that has. And if I may add, although it would not on its own be enough for simply to assert we didn't receive it, they also claim that their records had no indication of receiving it. Which is, uh, we would argue, which is similar to them saying we didn't receive it. Whether they say we didn't receive it or they look at documents and say... No, I agree with you. On its own, it's not good enough. But the question is whether or not all of this together might be enough to raise that tribal issue. And with all... Even if it's not good enough to get them summary judgment motion. Correct. It's your motion. <laughs> correct. And, and with respect, we believe the Supreme Court and then the appellate division did get this correctly. Mm -hmm. What was the argument below regarding that postmark issue? It, is it, was it argued that the postmark isn't necessary for a, a valid certified mailing or that, uh, you know, that is some proof that it wasn't certified mailed? It actually wasn't discussed by the county below. Um, I believe at that point it was, there was a postmark missing. However, that is not proof in and of itself that it didn't go, that it wasn't there mailed. There is proof that it actually went. Right? I mean, isn't there a receipt that it was delivered to some other P.O. box somewhere? Correct. So, so it went. It's correct. not a question of it never got mailed. So the lack of a postmark doesn't go to whether it was mailed or not, whatever it may go to. But, and the address on the certified letter was the address that was on file? Correct. And, and Your Honor, that is where the county is standing before you saying, we did everything that we were required under the amended statute. Everything to the letter. In-rem tax foreclosures are very strict. 
Um, and those of you that may have been involved in them before, you have to, as an attorney, you sit there and you go over and over and over all of the issues because you want to make sure you don't get tripped up. And in this case, um, the uh, appellant is saying, although I believed he was saying, although I heard something different today, that the county did what the statute said. We just didn't get notice of it. I would like to, um, if possible, Does go. Does notice require actual notice? Absolutely not, Your Honor. Actual notice is not required. What about checking to see if the delivery was completed the way they did? And that is not required under the statute either. Um, such a, there has to be, as the Jones case said, there has to be a balance between the state's interests and the property interests and the private property. But, and, but you're saying today that, first of all, uh, just to be clear, that it's your reading of the appellate division decision uh, different from theirs, that is to say, your reading is not that it excludes, the majority doesn't exclude the possibility of putting forward enough information, just it's not here to rebut this presumption. So your position, uh, just to be clear, mm -hmm. today is that the presumption is rebuttable? Yes, and that's what the appellate division did say. In fact, the appellate division, if you go through it, it specifically states, um, just what, I'm sorry, I know yes, you're looking through okay. the record, but can I just ask you, what is the presumption that is rebuttable? Is it the presumption that the notice was received, or is it, is it the presumption that all necessary requirements in, this, in 1125 have been complied with? The latter. The county is taking the position that is the latter. Um, to go back... Why isn't it the presumption that it's been received? Isn't that the whole point of the certified mail and, and, and expanding post-Jones? the requirements on the municipality, different ways to provide notice. And the municipality does. And if these things came back, you'd have to do something else? That is true. If they came back, we'd have to do something else. They didn't come back. Why isn't that the, the presumption is to the receipt, not that you've mailed it? Because to put a presumption on the actual notice um, would take away from the uh, 1125, I believe it's 3B, um, where you'd say you don't need actual notice. Then, yeah. then why, why does it say shall be deemed received as opposed to shall be deemed mailed properly? In the event- Received has to mean that it, it, it got to the entity or the individual that it was being mailed to for the purpose of notice in accordance with the statute. And that goes to the due process. Uh, okay. Go ahead. You can. That goes to the due process argument. Um, and in this case, due process was followed by the county. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honors, I, I must take issue with how counsel has characterized the Supreme Court decision. On page six, the Supreme Court says it's so troubling that the notices weren't, uh, that the mail went to the wrong address, but I'm bound by the fact that they weren't returned. And on page three of the appellate division decision, they said almost the exact same thing. They said the proof established that they didn't get notice, but because they weren't returned by the post office, it's too bad. And one can only, you can only imagine in the next case, you'll have any number of scenarios where, you know, through a series of mistakes, an innocent homeowner doesn't get notice, doesn't know they need to pay the tax, and because, but they were delivered somewhere else. But so wouldn't that, your rule be that the town then really has an obligation to do what you did, to go to the post office, to pull the tracking records, the certified mail, and see if it got there? Because otherwise, and you know, we may be talking about a town with relatively few, or we may be talking about New York City. They have to look at every single one of these and pull the record because they don't know when they foreclose two years later, somebody could come in and say, you know what, we went and got the certified mail record and it, did, it got delivered to a different post office box and now I get, you know, relief. Judge, this was the standard in the third department for 30 years and it didn't impinge that tax sales. That they had sales. to go look at the certified mail No, that mail you had record? a rebuttable presumption as to notice and it didn't slow down tax sales, it didn't slow down. What was the rule when they had that? It was that. A regular mail. It was a regular mail, but it was that, well, I think homeowners were entitled to certify it even in that earlier amendment. But the point is that these cases don't come up often, but when they it's do, they involve an innocent homeowner who's lost back, their home. Then you don't have an obligation to go track down the certified mailing record. But now that they've put in this certified mailing record, under your rule requirement, under your rule, the town, the municipality would have to check that record. Otherwise, there's no repose in any foreclosure for two years. There's no, repo there's no repose at all because of section 1137. We said in our reply that we're not imposing that burden on the county, but the 1137 states on its face, it's not in contention here, 
that the deed shall not be conclusive for two years. So for 30 years, the county operated under a rebuttable assumption, and for 30 years they lived under a regime, and they still do today, where whatever deed they take is not conclusive for two years. So what if the rebuttable presumption is the same burden that you had when it was just a regular mailing? Those you cases- the mailing out and nothing comes back, which is what happened in this case, as far as we know. So why have you met any burden that you have? Those, those cases were harder to prove. And I think the fact that the legislature added the certified requirement for every, everyone is telling you that it's a rebuttable presumption that the respondent can come in within two years with that evidence. Otherwise, if it, if, if it only turns on the post office, and I, I don't believe that the legislature intended to give the post office the last word here, but if it only turns on the post office returning the notices, then you really don't need the certified mailing. Because if someone has proof that they didn't get it, too bad, they would still lose their house. And that, 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 is, that cannot be what the legislature did when they amended 1125. So let, let me ask you this. Um, uh, based on what you submitted in opposition to their cross motion for summary judgment. I assume your position is that then they should have, of course, denied them summary judgment, but then should you have requested more discovery? I mean, what, what should have happened given the nature of mm -hmm. what you submitted with your objections to their cross motion? The, the, what should have happened is the court should have said, I've reviewed the evidence, I've weighed it, here's my view of the evidence. What the Supreme Court said was, I'm so troubled by the fact that you have proven to me that you didn't get notice. But unless those notices are returned by the post office, I can't do anything for you. That was the error because the court owed some additional process at that point, which was to look at the evidence. I'm not sure if additional discovery is needed what, or not. What would have, but is the conclusion that the court would have had to have reached that they're persuaded given what is before them on the cross motion and, and uh, your opposition that they didn't follow the statute? Is that what the court is trying to figure out? No, because, and this is in the Jones case, the, Jones states that general rule that it, there's, there's no, uh, that actual notice is not a requirement. Right. But, then jo but Mr. Jones got his house back because at that crucial moment, the county owed him more process. Our argument is that at that moment when we brought that, and this is how the statute is set up, at that moment when we brought that evidence to the Supreme Court, it was error for the Supreme Court to say, I can't hear this evidence because you can't show me that the notices were returned. Is it, is it then that you're saying at that point, if the court reaches that conclusion, should have then determined whether or not equitable relief is appropriate? I, I think the court, uh, on remand, if that happens, yeah. the court can, can review the evidence and determine, should I grant summary judgment based on the evidence, not based on my assumption that, I, uh, that only the notices being returned can overturn a sale. And can also, if, if they don't uh, find a basis in the statute, can consider equitable relief. Thank you, counsel. Thank you.